Hey guys, how you doing? Angel on Fire here again with Metal Mouse Software, and today I am going to be doing the second tutorial for Blitz 3D. And so in the first tutorial, I kind of showed you guys how to install the program and the very basics on how to use the program. Uh, in this tutorial, I'm going to go over the very basics of coding and how to get started uh, with Blitz 3D or any other Blitz program in general. So, um, basically, I'm just going to talk to you guys about coding for a couple minutes. Uh, what coding is, is when you make an application or game or when you're running anything, it all has code that it runs. And it's not like code like that you can read in a book. It's um, code that the computer partially understands. So there's machine code, which is like ones and zeros, and then you don't program in that because that's all the computer understands. It just understands binary, which is just ones and zeros. And then uh, there's like these other kinds of codes that um, is in between uh, machine code and source code. And that's kind of, it's like, I'm not sure if it's hexadecimal or what, but it's just a whole bunch of numbers and letters. And uh, again, you can't read that. You can't program. Well, sorry, you can program in that, but it's incredibly difficult. Uh, and what I'm going to be teaching you guys is source code. Uh, so that is stuff uh, that is pretty simple to code. And uh, for example, I might just try to bring up a quick tutorial. Um, just Bonebot, for example. So this guy right here, all of this is code that it will understand. Now, of course, you're not going to understand any of this right now because it's crazy, uh, crazy difficult uh, to understand. But as you can see kind of right here, it says, if not animating. And that's sort of close to English. It's not like it's in a completely different language. Um, what it's saying right here is, if um, you're not doing animating, then do this. But again, you got to just think of it in that way while you're writing it. So this program, all this, what it's going to do is, um, if I can enter, it's just going to have um, moving guy, and I think, yeah, I can rotate and everything, but, uh, so that's extremely complicated stuff, I will get into that later, but for now, um, now that you know what simple source code is, um, I'm just going to go over some of the other key concepts of programming, so when you're programming, um, basically, if one of the big things that I find in programming uh, that not everybody understands is variables, and that's just like math, so um, if you have uh, say x plus 2 equals 3, then clearly x is going to be 1. So in this case, if I say, uh, and sorry, so what I mean there is uh, x is equal to something. So if I say x is equal to 1, now whenever I try to use x in the program, it's going to know it's equal to 1. So um, yeah, so that's just the basics of variables. Um, and so in this small tutorial, I'm just going to go over um, how to print things into an application, um, how to use some minor variables, and I'll try to keep it slow for you guys now. Um, what you guys need to have done is opened up uh, Blitz 3D. Now, I'm going to make this tutorial very, uh, very easy. If, like, if you don't have a dual screen to watch this and program at the same time, um, you can just listen to the audio, and for the most part, it will tell you everything you need to know. So, uh, if you just want to open up your window, uh, or you can just watch me and then do it afterwards, either way. Um, so what I'm going to do is, first of all, uh, the main command uh, in Blitz is print. So I'm just going to type print, and if I hit space, as you can see, it turns blue because it knows it's a command. If I had just a whole bunch of stuff at the end, it would stay white because it doesn't know, it doesn't recognize that as a command. Again, if I didn't do capital and I did print and I push space, it would capitalize it, make it blue, you know it's a command. Um, so if I want to say print, um, and the one that all programs start with is hello world. So what I need to do is I need to put it like this inside quotations. So I'm just going to say hello world. And I'm going to put a quotation mark. Now, if I weren't to have the quotation marks, what would happen is since it's saying print and then just hello world, it thinks the H and the D at the beginning and end are the quotations, so it will take those out, but I'm just going to put these in for now, and then I'll show you them without. So, hello world, and I'm going to run it. So, as you can see, it says hello world right on the screen, and that's the first line of code that most people do, um, and it will say program has ended, because that's all I have it done. Now, um, so hello world, and I will just hit OK, go back, and get rid of this, and if I hit go again, it's a daisy, so I guess that won't even work. But say I were to use, I don't think I can even use plus. Yeah, now you have to have the quotation marks right there. Um, so yeah, that's the first one, hello world, right there. Um, next of all, 
if I wanted it to not end right away, uh, say I wanted it to wait for three seconds, the next command I'm going to show you guys is delay. Um, D E L A Y, just normal delay. And I'm just going to type in 3000 now. Whenever you say delay, it will record or it will count it in milliseconds. So 3000 milliseconds is equivalent to three seconds. So now if I hit run again, it will say hello world, wait three seconds, and then it will say uh, the program has ended. Now I can also make it so after 3000 uh, milliseconds, I just say end. And so, as yeah, basically, you're just printing it to just printing hello world, you're waiting three seconds, and then it's going to end without uh, saying program is ended, it'll just close the program just like that. So, uh, that's those are the very, very basics. And um, if I say print uh, by, so it's going to print hello world, it's going to print by, and it's going to delay one second. So, hello world, bye, and then wait one second, it's going to close. So, as you can see, um, you can add as many of these as you like, um, and just keep on adding delays and prints or whatever. Just keep playing with that, it's pretty cool what you could do. Uh, but that's really basic when it comes to programming, and you can have a lot of fun with it, but there's a lot more that you could add to it, just really easy right off the bat. So, the next thing I'm going to show you guys is, as I was talking about variables, um, if I go back up and say... Um, now, actually, sorry, variables in basic are really easy. All I have to do is, right here, if I say x, I'm saying x is a variable. I don't have to make x, like put x into memory or anything. It's when I put it right there and say equals 1, I'm saying, x, first of all, there's x. As, you just make a variable. It's in the system now, and the value of x is 1. So I don't have to initialize it or anything. It's just there now. And so if I, I wanted to look at x well, wherever in the program, um, it would always be equal to 1 unless I changed it, and it will be there. Now, there are a few exceptions I'll go over later. Um, however, at the moment, you do not need to know them. So, um, so I'm going to say hello world. Actually, no, I'll just take that out for now. Take everything out except for this now. Now, if I say print x, and one second, I'm just going to delay. With two seconds, good. Okay. So, what I'm doing here is, again, I'm not actually going to use quotations this time. If I did quotations, as you already know, it's going to just say x. And that's not what I want. I want it to look at the variable. So, uh, the f easiest way to do this, and there are a couple different ways, is just say print x. Because it's not actually trying to print it as x as text. It's trying to find x somewhere in the program and then print it. So, I'm just going to hit run, uh, run again, and as you can see, it is 1. So basically, whenever it's in quotations, it will try to print that as text. And when it's not, it will look for that somewhere in the program and print it uh, as it is found in the program. Now, the other way of doing it, if I did want it in quotations, so say I wanted like x equals, um, and then I wanted it to state x. So what I would do here is, again, if I actually make quotations inside of the quotations, then... As you can see, it will turn white because now it's actually looking for the X. However, there's one more thing I have to add. I just have to add two plus symbols just like that. And so now, as you can see, there's a quotation right uh, right at the beginning uh, in print and right at the end. And then um, I had added new quotations in the middle. And then I added plus to kind of add buffers. So, I'm sorry, no, not buffers at all. I'm just using that as a word. Bumpers, I guess, uh, to X. Um, just so it knows that it's talking about X and uh, it knows where the beginning of the name X is and the end of the name X. So it's more if I added like ASD here, ASD here. Now, if I took this out, it wouldn't know where to start and where to end. So now it's just looking for that and you can go away. Um, and then I can easily just say run. And now it's going to say X equals one. So. Um, that's what I'm going to leave you guys with today, and so just play around with that. If you have any questions, post it in the comments, and I'll be glad to answer, or in my next video, I will address them and uh, just uh, help you guys fi uh, figure that out. But just play around with it, and um, I will be back soon with a new tutorial. So I'll talk to you guys later, and like this video if you found it helpful, and subscribe to my channel if you want to be notified and uh, want to watch more tutorials on pretty much anything I can think of. So. I will talk to you guys later, and you guys have a great day.